Hello and welcome to another episode of the My Little Podcast. Today we're here without our Brie, without our Bryson, without our Shay, without spouses. <laughs> we have dogs. That's about it today. So, and my name is Gary, and this is my wife Shelley. Hello. We're kind of the parents of this whole. Th- in this whole thing, this little homestead thing. And we're going to be reviewing some of your questions, some of your comments, and the things that you may have uh, wondered about concerning the past two videos, which would be Friday's video, which was the last one posted, and then Wednesday's before that one. So that's the two videos of last week. We'll take some questions. Hey, before we get to that, though, we do have a merch shop, I guess you might say. You want to go to the mylittlehomestead.com and hit the little shop button, and what you will find there will be shirts, t-shirts, shirts all kinds of stuff. all kinds of stuff all original designs and take a look at what we have going on there so that's it on the shop visit and um, have fun yeah now the wednesday's video that came out was if you remember or if you were with us at the time after garen and ellie after they got married they headed up to the cabin where we had built an earth bag structure out of the materials that were in the ground there and they were not sufficient to to stabilize that earth bag so it collapsed on us yes we'd call that the epic fail <laughs> yes, yes so garen and ellie were determined to go and rebuild that so they got a camper and hung out there for several months and the two of them rebuilt that whole thing we came and helped them you especially gare and bryson came and helped them put the roof together on it and then they finished up the entire exterior complete with outhouse and did a beautiful job and so now they had this idea for all of us to meet there mm-hmm. and stucco the inside mm-hmm. okay I'm, i gotta go check it out we haven't seen this thing in well i haven't seen it in a long time and garen and ellie did a lot of advancements that I, I just hadn't got to see yet. So let's check it out. All right. Awesome in here. Oh, it's so much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. What do you guys think? Oh my gosh. It's cool. And we were gonna do a room a day, which we accomplished we that. We did. This is from my father's daughter. It says here, uh, this really goes to show that teamwork really does work to make dream work and a lot quicker. Great job. Even better that you guys had fun. That is true. We, we typically have fun, fun when we all get together. You know, it was interesting too when we were going to do this. We have, uh, of course, some of us who have been doing these kinds of walls for uh, several of them. And then, of course, we have got a lot of the guys. You guys don't usually spend too much time on the stucco. You're doing the other parts of the building. We knew everyone was going to be coming and doing the stucco. So Ellie and I were kind of talking about it. And we decided let's chink it and then let's come back. And then maybe only a few of us will go back and do the complete work. And then, of course, we do it with the paintbrush too to smooth it when we get done. Mm-hmm. But what we found out is that it really didn't matter that anyone had the experience level. It just worked because of the paintbrush and because of once you chink it, it's kind of pretty smooth to do. Another little thing here is that each of us had our own little trip there. Balakali. Uh, mentions here, I love how you took the goats with you to have some fresh milk every day, but you started with four goats in the back of the truck. Did you lose two on the way up? You're very observant, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and they actually dropped off two of the goats at Ellie's brother's house. Uh, they wanted to get a couple goats. Yeah. I think they want to get milking and stuff too. So yeah. You got to imagine people that are... Um, are driving by Garen and Ellie as they're, <laughs> they're driving on the freeway or wherever they're driving, and somebody passes them, and they notice, hey, look, there's a camper, and there are there are four goats in the back of the truck. Why are they carrying goats? It looks like they're kind of going camping. Look at everything. they got water and all this different stuff on the truck. How people observe that on the freeway, mm-hmm. how funny that is that somebody's got a camper and a couple goats in the back of the truck. So if you see somebody driving with <laughs> with with goats in the back of their truck pulling a trailer, uh, you probably know who that is. Um, <laughs> but it, yeah, that's, that was them. And two, yeah, the fresh muck was awesome. We were able to have a fresh cereal and uh, goats. Just drinking goat's muck is good. Uh, it's one of the things we've we've talked about in the past and love doing. Greg Applegren, I've wondered how uh, many years an uh, earth bag structure can last. I need uh, cement foundations in which earth bags can be stacked on so that rain and wet ground do not cause disintegration uh, of the first rows of the earth bags. Their lasting long does depend upon their location, their climate, uh, what the structure or foundation is built on. Uh, We don't get that much erosion, but you might be in a location where the ground freezes, 
and then thaws and then freezes and thaws and and the ground itself actually goes through a lot of uh, change every year and you could have a lot of erosion i've seen uh, um people <clears throat> build earth bags where those first layer or two they actually go down and buy concrete sacks mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they lay them and wet them and just sediment places the foundation is that's brilliant um you know one or two layers of concrete and then they go up with the with the bags yeah and then of course like in our cabin property uh that's the one thing that garen and ellie did to fix our situation up there is they still use the same dirt but they added cement to it and that's what allowed it to solidify enough if you've ever been close enough to these buildings to touch them they are so solid. I don't even know what you would compare them to. Maybe something like a brick house or something. I mean, they're extremely solid. Yeah. Another comment we got here from Linda Blair. Do you organize big meals for everyone or branch branches of families for themselves? This isn't the only question we had about meals. You know, yeah. some are thinking, you know, we should do something like Duck Dynasty. You know, they <laughs> at the end of their show, you know, they always had a, a family meal. And uh, I thought fun. that was really cool. Uh, but we all do like to have meal time together. That's one of my favorite things. The kitchen was designed to have big family meals in. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one of my thoughts when I was kind of thinking of the space for that is that how many grandkids can I jam in this little hole? Uh, so that's kind of yeah. what I was really wanting to do. But the pleasant surprise was that Skyler turned out to be the barbecue man. He was he kept jumping up there and cooking all the, whether we had chicken or I'm trying to think to like hot dogs and sausage. He was primo cook on that barbecue. Were you impressed I with that? I was impressed with that. Yeah, and keeping that yeah. fire going. He oh, kept yes, going that. the teepee he, fire. He must have, I don't know if he was going. part of the Boy Scouts when he was younger no or what, idea, but he like but had that, that perfect amazing. little teepee yeah. fire going, too. He was. We jumped up and threw wood on it, but not like him. He didn't like put wood on it. Yeah. He arranged it from what was there. And then, of course, stacked the wood in properly yes. so that it would burn efficiently, I guess. So it's a good family time. Mm -hmm. Then we came back, and we had to get back to work. So, <laughs> so our, our next biggest project out here on the homestead is uh, putting the roof on the patio on the back and uh, we're using aircrete so we have some questions about the aircrete i have a question here from vic wilder this is how did you find out about these different things you guys have every trade in your family so self-sufficient so it's great yeah it's so funny we're we're kind of people who ask questions uh, isn't that what you think we love learning um do a lot of research. A lot of research. Mm -hmm. Tons and tons of research to learn things. And we try them out without fear. If we fail, it's just another opportunity to do something else or grow or or abandon or fix or whatever it has to be done to be efficient about it. And each person in the family's kind of taking their own little thing, you know. Garen really likes to work with metal. I really like to work with wood. Bryson likes to work with... A, 3D that's true. printer. That's true. He's a 3D printer guy. And electrician. Uh, yeah, more of the electrician stuff. And I'll default to his expertise because I was doing it before he was learning it and it didn't always go so Somewhere well. along the line, he, like, surpassed. Yeah, well, I think he was afraid I was going to electrocute myself. He's he like, says, oh, get away, Dad. Dad. Dad, let me do that for you. And uh, <laughs> so we're happy that he went on and did yeah. that. So we do do that. And two, engineering kind of went into this thought of the aircrete roof holding the weight very well. A uh, combination, of course, the metal and the aircrete itself. Uh, and Bryson and I just trying out something. Uh, we now have that roof on. And uh, very happy with waiting for a good rain to see how that works. And uh, we have the... Uh, yeah, now it's time to beautify it. We'll be doing that this week, too. A little stucco. And we are, we did decide to go with that sheeting, <clears throat> too, up there, which is going to save a lot of touch-up. could have done that, but we decided, let's just go with the sheeting. We also had ideas, too, to throw some insulation up there. Mm -hmm. Because people were saying when that sun hits that, metal's going to radiate down to the patio and be very hot. So that's a really good idea. And we might do that, mm -hmm. too. We'll kind of see. It's just going to be uh, you and I this week mm -hmm. working on that. So. We want to protect ourselves from the sun and the heat more than we do the cold and the snow. Mm -hmm. We just don't get snow uh, where we live that mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say. You know, I know. The there's always the hoop barn. <laughs> yeah. We like have a, an exception in 15 years. Everyone reminds us of the hoop barn yeah. if we say we don't yeah. get snow. Because we, we do, do get, get snow. <laughs> but that was like six inches. I mean, how many of you get six inches and you go, yeah, it just barely started. <laughs> well, we got a lady said this last week, there was 18 inches of snow already out. Wow. 18 inches she's already gotten. If we get six oh. inches of snow, that's an amazing amount amazing for amount. us. We don't get that much snow, like 18 inches, uh, even at a time. 
time. So um, that uh, that was kind of a very unusual situation. And this roof is going to handle easily handle six inches of snow if it even stays up there on the metal roof. I had not considered the metal heating up. And um, I think that's a, if we do, it would be a good time to do it now because otherwise we're going to take the sheeting down and put it up and we probably won't do it if we don't do it now. So. No, no. We could, well, no. See? Yeah. Asking myself questions. Well, what could we do? Uh, we could open up the soffits and blow it in. Um, but let's not go Ooh, there. That sounds fun. It, <laughs> that could, coming to a video near you. Uh, but yeah, that could, it's a possibility. Um, but I think if we put it in now, we're probably, we'll be happier, I think. Yeah. It doesn't need to be, you know, R400. We just need something that's going to, uh, you know, like you'd put typically in a roof, I guess, would be it. Okay. Hey, uh, Brock Airy says, uh, hello from Thailand. Well, hello. Wow. Uh, okay. I love it when, when uh, mom says to Bryson something about him wearing flip-flops. Uh, here in Thailand, you will find construction workers going up seven stories of bamboo scaffolding with flip-flops, or just barefoot to get to the roof that is at a very steep angle. They will climb to the top of the roof wearing no safety equipment either. Uh, you rarely ever hear any of them getting hurt. Uh, That's great. <laughs> do I recommend this? No. If you feel comfortable, why not? Bryson <laughs> is a smart kid, and I have no doubt if he felt uncomfortable doing what he did, he'd put shoes on. <laughs> so, yeah, you're you're correct. Uh, we did have our moments. I lived overseas in the Philippines for several years, and uh, everybody wore flip-flops doing everything. So, and also, too, you can see videos of people running around. They're just either barefoot or flip-flops doing alternative construction things. So, it's kind of a thing. It's uh, tough, too, in those really hot <clears throat> climates, especially here in some of the hot, hot parts of the summer to not want to wear flip-flops everywhere because it's so much more comfortable, yeah. um, you know. Something unusual has happened to his flip-flops, and he loves it, I think, is that, you know, usually it's that little thing in the middle that pops loose or breaks and the strap breaks and stuff. Uh, that hasn't happened to these flip-flops he was wearing. They've actually wore through, <laughs> and his heel, is, is that, there's a hole in the bottom of it. Uh, we've been doing some grounding uh, ideas here lately, kind of thinking about grounding and people getting grounded. And I th every time he walks, he's grounded because he has a That's hole. That's good. At least every other form. step. Yeah. And he won't change out. <laughs> he won't buy any new ones. I mean, what are no. they? They're cheap. <laughs> you know, the cheapest shoe you can buy. These little flip flops. And the guy won't buy any new ones because he's got these broken in just perfectly. So. Yeah. He, that doesn't even cross his mind. No. No. <laughs> Besides that, when he looks down, what does he see? He just his feet. Doesn't even notice he has flip flops on. So uh, Patricia Bell, she mentioned this uh, on the last video, the Wednesday's video, but she did say, "I'm so glad to see you guys are at it once more." Don't forget, Gary's shop is next. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> and thank you, Patricia Bell. How long have we waited together, you and me, Patricia, for the shop? A long time. <laughs> a long time for the shop. But that's okay. We've been planning and thinking and, and what to do. It's gotten better since we've been thinking yes, about it. Yes, it has. Ideas. Yeah. So we, we will be getting started on that fairly soon here. Uh, as soon as we get the uh, probably the underside of the... Uh, the patio done. We'll that should there. be the last we thing be. before we head over there. Yeah. And but we make good. no promises. <laughs> but we hope to get to it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the plan. It's the next project on the yes, list. It is. We're kind of getting closer to a wrap up. On Wednesday, we're going to be looking at getting um, some footage from Shay, and again, it'll be a mystery video, <laughs> so we're we're not sure what that is about. And then, uh, but on Friday, we're going to see Bree and Jared are going to bring you some new stuff from their travels. Yeah. So we don't have much detail about what's going to happen next week. It is a weekly peak, and from peak to peak and week to week, we uh, we're, we're not always sure what's going to happen <laughs> uh, because we're not there yet, are we? Last Wednesday's video, that's where. Garen and Ellie put out a video on the cabin, and Friday was the video on the Air Crete patio, if you happen to miss that. Mm. So you can go back, and there'll be links down in the description for that. Bryson's challenge was, which way was the roof pointing? It was pointing north. Today is a Columbus Day, where we believe Columbus came by to stop by and say hi to the North American continent. So happy Columbus Day. Yeah, hope you have the day off. Yeah. Thank you very much for being with us, uh, us two today. We're going to say goodbye. Bye. Bye.